All Hallows' Eve has become a night of panic, oh. where children wear costumes and run amok. Oh. Amok! Amok, 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 amok! Welcome back to WD Magic Cast for week of October 9th, 2022. This is episode 198. WD Magic Cast, the show about the mouse, the marvels, the galaxy, and beyond. I'm your host, Matthew Graken. On this week's show, Isaac and I do our Halloween special. We discuss not one, not two, but three movies. The first two are the Hocus Pocus, Hocus Pocus 1, Hocus Pocus 2, and the third is Werewolf by Night, all available on Disney+. Plus. We'll be back after these words from our friends and sponsors. And now, on with the show. Good evening, mere mortals. It is that time of year again. It's getting a little crisper outside. The leaves are falling. The pumpkins are coming out. And the trick-or-treating will be starting soon. This is the Halloween season. Which, synonymous with Halloween, is scary movies. Or Halloween-themed movies. Witches, ghouls, werewolves, oh my. And this episode, we're going to be covering all of those. To bring along... I had to bring someone with magical powers himself. He talks to creatures, and he likes being in black and white sometimes. Isaac, welcome back. Um, okay. Uh, uh, well, thank you for letting the audience know that that I have mental issues to the audience, which is great. Um, I am black. Ladies and gentlemen, if anyone wanted to know that. So, yes, thank you. Thank you for having me back on <laughs> the <this> podcast. <laughs> you gotta go there. All right. <laughs> uh, so, but, yeah, let's do it, man. How you, All how right. I, I was more referencing the, the, our, the first topic being Werewolf by Night, which was filmed almost or shown almost entirely in black and white. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, so, um, Marvel's Werewolf by Night, it is a Halloween special. It's, you're saying it's a standalone. I mean, it's always a standalone until it isn't. Uh, 52-minute runtime, directed by Michael Giacchino, uh, who's mostly known for his musical work. He has done some stuff in the short film end, or short subject end. This is, I guess, his longest piece so far uh, again of 52 minute, uh, minutes um you know got uh gail garcia bernaro as jack russell how appropriate uh lauren donnelly as elsa bloodstone those are the two main characters there's some other people thrown in there and uh yeah it, it's it's more they, they they like to put it as Marvel's toe dipping into the horror film. Um, what what do you think of that? Do you think that's accurate? Yeah, I think honestly this is probably their most um, probably their most mature 
I, I, I don't want to say going into rated R territory ish, but it this has been their most violent Marvel property to date. If you really think about it, granted it was in black or white, but a lot of I feel like a lot of the stuff that they shown I, I noticed right off the bat felt very, very up your face visceral. You know, normally mm-hmm. n- now normally like. Uh, let's take a great example uh, in terms of um, Doctor Strange, the multiverse of madness and how that was horror-esque. Um, but I would say that the violence in that was more, um, I would say, exaggerated or stylized in a way yeah. where it's depicted. This felt very, very no straightforward in terms of being very visceral, in terms of depicting um, violence. So I think that was the first thing that kind of caught me off guard. Uh, other than that, in terms of the entire premise, I think this is, I think doing these specials is really good. I think it allows us to explore more characters that maybe you don't want to dedicate maybe a Disney Plus season towards the nine episodes. These small one takes of these different characters that we get to kind of explore within the realm of the Marvel Universe, I think is particularly great. And to kind of answer your, uh, your question, yeah, I think this does slightly crack the door open into more of the monster verse that maybe they want to generate. And I know that's getting people very excited because we all do know that the Blade film is coming out right around the corner. Um, and it's may hint a special supernatural team, aka my sons, if, <laughs> if that is kind of the lead that they want to pull with this. So, uh, no, I think the potential of this, in terms of this, this short, I thought it was very fun. I thought it was really good. Um, yeah, and I think it was just simple and direct, and I really did. I always find there's something special about horror films in black and white. To me, they always seem a little edgier, a little more scarier mm-hmm. in the black and white than with the color. I, I, something psychological, it may just be me, but the fact that this was in black and white just gave it that slightly grittier, slightly um ominous feeling yeah. uh and i think it played out well uh the the use of certain lighting in it uh the cast was good um what and i think my problem with it being called more of a horror film i mean yes it was a little more uh violent with some you know limbs cutting off in in some of the stuff but then you get this weird sentimental end of the story that you usually don't get in horror type of stuff whenever you, when you discover um the, the one of the characters and then the the kind of whole arc behind that character um i i was i found that a, you know a very nice touch and wasn't expecting that and it, you know going along with you know with marvel it's more than just the action it's more than that you know there's the 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 heart that um sometimes we've been missing i think in more of the recent films and we got that in this even though it is such a short like i said 52 minutes and that's including credits it goes fast um but you know they they do a nice way they do it nice to you know just touch on certain things um i i uh I, I I enjoyed it. Um, I thought they did. A, uh, the director did a nice job with it. The camera angles, the camera work. Uh, again, um, certain things being in color, but for the most part, in black and white. Uh, it it was beautiful. No, I, like I said, I, I I agree with you with the whole black and white theme. It's it's it's. I think they've, I think they've kind of now earned again now that we're in. in what four phases of this and we've had so many films uh you know you this kind of where and and to have a platform like disney plus where you can experiment mm-hmm. with different things within 
still can be within the same MCU, but you can experiment with different things and then later on move on to movies if you feel. I think it's a great testing bed, again, to throw out new ideas. And like we said, like I said earlier, to introduce new characters that may not deserve. Don't Okay, it's not worth flipping the bill for a 10-episode arc, but maybe no. good enough for a one-episode, uh, just like a special off. And I think introducing these specials is, is probably good and probably less expensive on Disney's part right now in terms of budgets are concerned, in terms of the money they're flipping on a lot of these other stuff. So I right. you know that they have something really simple and really, a, a nice, a very nice contained story too, because I think, again, I feel like we have mentioned this a lot on your podcast is that sometimes with Marvel shows, um, sometimes the beginning, middle, end doesn't really stick the landing. Sometimes it doesn't, it, it, it gets really wobbly and sometimes it doesn't end. Here, this is a very consistent A, B, C. It's very clean and it's done yep. very, very well. Um, so it, you really understand that, like the writers and the director really had a, a vision. Um, they had a concise story, and it was very enjoyable. So and I really you, do give them props to that. You don't need to know anything going into it. Exactly. That's that's that's, that's actually key. really big, especially for us old heads right now. That like <laughs> like there's like you don't really have to know any real any references to past MCU films to really know this is just new new character right off the bat. You know it within an hour. And no, that that's actually really telling. That's that's really, really good. Yeah. So I I think they did um you know hats off to them for taking that gamble. And um for me I think in the end it pays off. I think this is something that Every October, I can go back to and enjoy. Um, I mean, I don't know, again, how you feel on that. But for me, um, it, it's, it was well done enough that I can go back to it. I'm not saying it's spectacular. I'm not saying it's the you know, most horrifying or best um, Halloween special I've ever seen. But it is, it's one of those specials that you go, okay, I enjoyed that. You know, I'll watch it again in a year. Yeah, and I think what's really cool about it, like you said, it kind of cracks the door open to another part of the of the MCU, which is like the monsters. And I know, I know, we get, we get that element with Doctor Strange, in, in yeah. a sense, but we really haven't with everything that's going to be coming in the horizon between like Fantastic Four, right, and me. Um, monsters in general, just like even back to like the days of Universal when they did the monster movies, like that feels like a missing art. So the fact that MCU is kind of bringing that into their fold, I think, is even that's just another realm to explore, right? In terms of televisions and films and stuff like that. And yeah, um, which I think is is good. I want to ask you a question: Where do you do you see more? Uh, I think we agree, but in terms of this element, do you see them exploring more on that? Do you think they'll be able to add existing characters into this in some form of way? Do you see like a Midnight Suns down in in the future, um, maybe uh, as a potential build up in some form of way? Depending on how Werewolf by Night is received, yes, I can see them pursuing this further, and I think they kind of are hoping. It's well enough received that they can justify it and, and go further with it. Um, so I, I, I do, you know, it, and it's all a numbers game. It's yeah. always, always a numbers game. If something does well enough for them, yes, they're going to keep going that way. But you look at the right on the wall, you know, um, Marvel Zombies, Doctor Strange 2, you know, uh, Multiverse of Madness, Werewolf by Night, you know, Upcoming Blade. This is a direction that they want to delve into and, you know, really dig into, for lack of better terms. Uh, something, a direction that they do want to keep heading in. So... Matt, Matt, do they want to dig their claws into it? But a bum <laughs> uh -huh. okay. It's something they can sink their teeth into. Exactly, Isaac. Uh, so oh, yeah. Oh, look at that! Look at that pun. Two puns back to back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> this is a punny show. What do you want? 
Um, so overall, let's um, out of ten, what would you give Werewolf by Night? Honestly, I, like I said, I, I enjoyed it. I, I I give it a, you know, I I I give it a ten. I think it was it it was good. I think I like I said, it was clean. It was precise. It was short. Uh, it had its moments. You know, had a little, little bit dash of comedy, not too much. And I again, I think, I uh, I I think in terms of the adult fan in me, I think this was something that we were kind of. We didn't want to handle how, how they're going to start handling more mature stuff moving forward. Again, I feel like they could, they were able to kind of get away with that with the black and white. Like we yep. do, because it's black and white, we're not really showing you know all the gore and 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 the visceration stuff is censored out. So to them, it allows them to go in that realm. That also quietly also being said in terms of like you said future properties, are they willing? Are they willing to step into that R-rated territory? Because, which is is something that I am very curiously moving forward. Um, one believes that I mean Deadpool, you know Deadpool three is right around the horizon, so one would um, they're going to be fine with it. But but no, I think this is kind of one of these properties where you're starting to see. Um, Marvel kind of after what 20 20 years of just kind of being a kid, going through kindergarten, now being in middle school, then graduating in high school, now finally kind of graduating to college. This is kind of them being in their 30s and 40s as adults right now. They're heading into their adult years into the MCU, and now I think they're trying to make properties that are more mature and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, and, and you got the mature end of it. You also got the, well, this is kind of more like an artsy film piece um, in, in some of its ways. But I, again, I think it worked well. I would give it an 8 out of 10 because um, I think in some ways, I don't know, I was expecting to push the envelope a little further, but I think they, I do think they went far enough uh, for the time being. And how you do this stuff is that you just slowly introduce it. You slowly introduce it. So you you know every moment is a you know a another step, another step. You don't go full on, you know, gore and bloods and guts and everything all over the place. You slowly walk it in and you you get people used to it and build up their tolerance. So you see what point is okay. If part people start pushing back, it's easier to pull back a little bit than having to pull back a whole thing. So um, but. I mean, 8 out of 10, like I said, I really enjoyed it. I thought they did a fantastic job. I'm probably being a little too harsh on it with that with that grade. But um, in I, some I ways, I also wish there was a little more to it. You know, the, I, the 52 minutes was 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 quick, but the, the pacing was good. Yeah, I think, again, like I, I like these shorter stories. I think again, Marvel can explore lesser tier characters with these and then kind of um, kind of finagle, fit them in to where they need to be in terms of the MCU. And I think, like, we're, again, if if this was a nine-episode arc, probably would feel a little bit different. I don't know exactly how much you can get into it or how you would be able to explore into it. But, again, like you said, the fact that this, at the moment, is not really part of the MCU, but its own standalone story that is that you can kind of digest and just go into. It, it feels good. It feels good. I think Werewolf by Night is again. This was a, a an episode that I really didn't know how I feel about, and I didn't know exactly how it was going to fit into the whole canon. Now the fact that we watched it, it was done really well. Yeah, I I, I applaud them for their effort on it, and um, I'd like to see more like this. Um, so moving along to their next horror aspect, you know, something that really terrifies people. I have a trio of witches I want to talk about. And, uh, unless there was something more that you wanted to, to marinate on Werewolf by Night. No, I'm good. I'm All good. right. Let's, let's, let's talk about, let's, let's talk about it. the witches. 
Now let's talk about 1993's Hocus Pocus. Yes, it's 93 and 2000. This is 2002. We're talking about a 25-year-old movie, uh, but that's okay. <sighs> Actually, it's older than that, isn't it? My goodness. Um, but we do random reviews at this, but there's a reason because Hocus Pocus is not you know, a, a done franchise yet. So the original movie coming out in 1993 with an hour and 36 minute runtime directed by Kenny Ortega. Yes, that Kenny Ortega who did uh, around the time he did Newsies and he's also most probably best known for his High School Musical, High School Musical 2, High School Musical 3, Descendants, etc. He's done a lot for Disney as far as directing, even though he's a choreographer. Um, starring Bette Midler as Winifred. Sarah Jessica Parker as Sarah and Kathy Najami as Mary, uh, Omri Katz as Max, Thora Birch as Danny, and Vanessa Shaw as Allison. So you get you get quite a bit of a interesting lineup of actors and actresses. Um, you know, it was an interesting story how Beth Mender got involved, but we we will leave that maybe for later um this has become one of those cult classic followings that uh didn't do so well when it first came out but it's kind of hung around and grown legs afterwards to the point that Disney started introducing these characters into the theme parks for their Halloween shows and specials, and it had a lot of popularity. Um, so I, I watched this movie at one point in the 90s. I remember seeing it and going, okay. Um, but I, you know, give everything a, a chance. I watched it again, and... It was okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> did have you did have you did you see have you seen this movie in the in the past since it's come out or did you just watch it uh, for the first time for this episode? No, I've I've never watched Hocus. I've known about Hocus Pocus back in the past, but I was again it was never one of the movies that I've ever gravitated towards when I was young. But I've known that existed, so. Um, but like you said, just like you, you've had I've had friends that had cult followings that really enjoy watching that film. So, um, yeah, I can't say as a kid that was one of the films that I watched back in the nineties. Uh, but again, I had the opportunity to watch it over the weekend, um, and I have to say, um, I, I'm not a big fan of this film. <laughs> Forward. Oh man, um, the 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 thing that I've, I I took away from uh, this film is that uh, this movie didn't ruin the lives of both either Ben Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, or Kathy Dejami because clearly both all three of these women went on to have fantastic careers. Clear everybody knows Sarah Jessica Parker went on to do Sex and the City, fantastic. Kathy John went on to do uh, My Big Fat Greek Reddit Wedding, and Ben Miller's Ben Miller, so she she's kind of done 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 her thing. But I it was just it was just such a it was such a bad film for I guess for 1993 standards. It was just like it was just awful. Like like first of all like I wasn't. I, I'm not a big fan of Max, which is clearly the protagonist of the character. He, he's he's such a nerd, like he he's he he's such a nerd. He takes it to a new level. He takes nerd to such a new level, and I he he was he's just he's such a useless character. He gets his he gets his butt whooped pretty much all throughout the entire film. Like he gets his butt handed to him for witches. He gets picked on. Uh, he gets shut down by the by by the by the hottest girl in school. I mean, yeah, even, he still ends up with her. Yeah, which <laughs> doesn't make any any sense. I mean, even Danny has more cojones than his little brother, and 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 even the little sister, uh, played by Thor Bitch, which I thought she was adorable, film takes which a shot at her. 
which Danny takes a shot at him, like takes a shot at his virginity. Like that, that let me even speak on that too for a little bit because you notice how that's like a, a, a poor gag. Yes. They go after this kid's virginity, which is like one it's it's one of two things. First of all, one, I can understand why he's a virgin because he's a nerd. Nerd. And then two, like why why? Why are they taking a shot at this poor kid for just being being a virgin? I feel like that that's totally wacky at the end. Like I feel like that's that's just kind of weird, don't you think? To kind of like I, I thought that was like a, that. an unnecessary you know? part of the writing. Like, why? It's a weird gap. It's like it, a, it's yeah, a weird it, jab. It, it didn't need to be in there. You could have just you could have done the film fine without having to to include that in in whatever part. And even this, just to jump ahead a little bit for the second one, they even tried to clean that up. And they still had trouble with it. It's like, yeah. well, we we probably shouldn't have put it in there. We can't explain it, but we have to go with it now because we've already spent ninety six minutes on it. So, um, but yeah, he is by far. I think I did. I enjoyed the zombie Billy more more than Billy. Max. Billy Billy Butcher played by by Doug Jones. Um, uh, for people who don't know, this guy is pretty much amazing. He does a lot of like um, aliens and prosthetics that people do know about that. Uh, um, really big into that. So the fact that he hit he, he I, the fact to learn that he was the was Billy the zombie, but one of his big works back in the day, 1993, was actually quite was quite actually surprising on this. So yeah, no, I agree. Billy Billy Butcher was fun. In this film, I actually quite quite enjoyed him. Um, another person that um, that actually I was shocked about was Mr. Banks, who played the cat. Yes, uh, he he played the cat, but uh, which is actually played by uh, Jason. Mar I think Martin plays the cat version. However, uh, Sean Murray is the one that played the young version. And for people who don't know who Sean Murray is, he's on NCIS. Like, that's what kind of, like, wait, wait, why is that face so familiar? That I learned that he used to be on, he's on NCIS on that show. So, so, I'm, so, so even he found work after, after that film. So I'm very happy for him. Yeah, um, Vanessa Shaw has also yes. done several things. Um, oh, yes. Since she, she's been in a, a, quite a bit of stuff. Uh, Thora Birch has um, done a few things. Oh yeah, for this show, yes. Omri, uh, not so much. He's no. the, kind of been his, his, his shining moment. He did stuff beforehand, but that was kind of, I guess, his end. Um, Bette Midler, they got for very little money because this was when she was having, uh, uh, well, let's say one or two issues. The yeah, you know, the Betty Ford Clinic, um, you know, was was a a nice resting spot for her, and uh, you know, it's got her for you know she was having trouble at work. Hey, come here and do this movie. Okay, you're gonna pay me. The money's good. I'll do it. I'm not sure how Sarah Jessica Parker came about. Kathy uh, Jammy was doing was between the Sister Act movies at that time. Yes. So she was doing stuff at the, on the Touchstone, and she was already uh, working for Disney, so she was an easy grab, probably oh, at that point. Yeah, no, you're right. Yes, wow, that is a great pickup. I totally forgot she was the sister act. Oh, wow. Yeah, strangely enough, she was playing Sister Mary, and here she is, Witch Mary. <laughs> There's got to be something with the names because. She is Mary in two different franchises. Sarah Jessica Parker plays Sarah. It's like, well, let's make it easy for you to remember your character's name. It's your name. Um, so I, I don't under, <laughs> I, 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 like, I want to talk to the writers and say, where did you come up with the names? Yeah. Um, Probably. Probably sit, had something laying around and stuff like that. Oh, and 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 by, I also want to do a big correction before you know I get called out. She wasn't in my 
big fat Greek wedding. I'm thinking of somebody completely yes. else. Completely else. So um, before I get called out on it on this podcast, which I would, I just want to, I want to sit down and, and recorrect that though. But yeah, no, but now the more that you, you, you said that I had, like I said, she does. Yeah. Sister act is where, where I actually remember her the most, especially the one, one and two. Yeah. Films. She did sister act. Mm-hmm. She's done rat race. Uh, she's done a lot of voice work. A lot of voice work. Yes. But yeah, she's, she has incredible. Uh, Three American uh, Dad, uh, Rise of Ninja Turtles, Robot Chicken, Eleanor, Elena of Avalar, The Rocketeer, animated series for Disney Plus, uh, Disney Channel, um, Disney Junior, uh, Rapunzel. She was in. She does oh, the mother in Rapunzel, uh, the Tangle series. Yeah. Um, oh, Jack Horseman. She's. I mean, she's. She's she her talent. Be- is quite she's even in descendants as an evil queen yes yes yeah no she she definitely has a very broad uh very good resume in 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 terms of voice acting where oh she was even make it or break it yeah Yeah. so she's she is quite desperate housewives ugly betty she's got quite the resume yeah no tinkerbell movies wally very good resume, which I think is fantastic. And That's so, Raven. Yeah, she 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 has got a great great resume going. Um, in Bette Midler as well. I mean, she's just she's Bette Midler. Sarah Jessica Parker, of course. You know, she's uh, no stranger to to work. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's an interesting combination of talent of people who've done a lot of work, people who are beginning their work. Because uh, I think Thora Birch, this was one of her first things. Same with Vanessa. Um, and to see where they've got, you know, a lot of these people have gone from there. Obviously, Kenny Ortega, again, has, has done a lot. And um, to me, this seemed like it should have been a, uh, a DCOM, which is a Disney Channel original movie. Uh, and not necessarily a theatrical release. They weren't doing... Disney Channel original movies that much at that point it wasn't so much a thing. I think if this movie came out a few years later, it may have been that. Um, you know, it, it's it's got some of the you know fun little gags of oh well the brooms have been taken what do they do now? You know, one's on a vacuum cleaner and one's on a uh, a mop and another one's on a uh, just while well, she had a, a broom. She had uh, the broom. She had the broom, but the other one was on a mop, and the other one was a vacuum cleaner, pretty much. Yeah, it's just those goofy gags that you know was thrown in there. Like you, you get your goofy gags, you get the yeah, you, you know, you, it was it, it was goofy and corny, and the pacing was just all over. I felt like the pacing was just weird and all over the place, and. Yeah, I just, I just like, oh my god, and it, he just felt, I just felt stupid, and the parents were stupid too. I like the parents. The parents are usually always stupid in these films. They're like, you know, you see your kid not having shoes. It's like, I guess the kid didn't wear shoes to go to school. Like, do you really not like wear shoes today? <laughs> yeah, like the parents are always stupid in these films. So it's like, ah, oh my. Lord, I mean, I get it. It was the '90s, but ah, uh, it was it was completely terrible. Although, like I said, Vanessa Shaw was fantastic, was beautiful then, and and, a, and she's beautiful now. Like, yep. looks, a woman looked way too old, older for herself. Um, but then again, I, I assume like these people were probably in their 20s anyway when they were um, probably were in their 20s or. Usually, when they do these high school things, they no, do... they were they were teenagers. Are they teens? Yeah, oh. uh, Vanessa and Omar are my around my age. Yeah. Okay. So they're all right. Fair. Uh, told, fair enough. Um, yeah. Just. Oh God! It, 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 all types of corny. It was it, all incredibly types of corny, and then you know the goofy running gags and, and the stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> Like, oh, gee. It starts off fairly ominous, and then it just kind of goes, you know, it doesn't take itself serious after that. Yeah. Um, 
it has all your tropes. It, yeah. It really, it has all your goofy tropes. Tropes, stereotypes. Yeah, it hits little, the little notes on everything there. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, it's a product of the '90s in Disney live action in the '90s, where it, they still were. If it was under the Disney Studio label or the Walt Disney Picture Studio label, um, it was more of a lighthearted, campy type of stuff that we've been doing for decades at that point. Um, anything that wasn't at that point was either Miramax or Touchstone. That's where they were going with their more serious, more, you know, solid movies. Um, so that this is. Like I said, you know, you have the same actress in the Sister Act movies, which those are, you know, highly acclaimed movies that um, I think they've kind of disappeared. And I think those need to be revisited because particularly the first one is really well done, but it is an edgier and more adult themed movie. Uh, considering how the the story develops and how uh, Whoopi Goldberg's character ends up in the situation that she is in. Uh, Turner, Hooch, Splash, all that type of stuff. Um, again, all around that time, a little bit earlier. These, um, yeah, it, it's it's such a weird combination of like, oh, we got all these people, and you know, this is this is this is what you get. But I I do have to tread lightly because it's become such a cult following it. I, I I frankly don't understand why. It's one of those movies that I know people love it. It's a fan favorite by some people. It's it's grown legs decades after it came out. I, I'm not one of the ones that understand it. Um, so no, me ne- ne- neither do I. I I it, I I found this movie just. But it's your age group that's getting you know keeping it alive. <laughs> yeah, which is I, I again all the reason why I don't know why I just found this film to be just very corny, even for its time. And I I figured even now a guy who didn't watch it when it was a kid and I watch it older maybe I would find maybe maybe there's some relevance or maybe I could find subtlety to this though. But no, watching this was just it was just a a, a cornball of a film. I thought Match was a nerd. I just kept saying nerd throughout the whole thing. I just never found the character. I just felt he, he was he he just got punked. I just you you, you wanted to pull Nelson on him from Simpsons and just go to ha <laughs> ha. He he's just such a he no he's just such a punk of a character right now. Like everybody punked him. Like everybody took a shot at him. Like you're such a a loser protagonist, and you still got the girl at the end. You and deserve you get, nothing. You had the two bully he characters. Nothing. Yeah, you had the two bully characters that looked like stereotypes. By stereotypes, the way. they looked like they're yeah, you know, taken from. Well, we don't want to do Bulk and Skull from the Power Rangers, so we're going to do these two guys that are bad Bill and Ted impressions that look like Bulk and Skull. Uh, it just it it's yeah. Um, and you think there would be some sort of redeeming arc towards the end of it, and there wasn't, other than Max getting his shoes back which like oh good for you 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 got your shoes back yes they they got what they deserved but yeah but you have to remember like matt didn't do anything to do that that was just the nerd that was just the there were the witches that that basically kidnapped the kids and he just stole, took his and shoes back he did not grow a backbone <laughs> no no he didn't that's why i found that protect i found max to be a nerd like yeah. I, i'm gonna keep on saying that like he 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 sucked he's the worst character danny was such a danny the little sister had had bigger kahunas than his than than max that's well, again was, let's go back to billy he billy if it wasn't for billy then he would have uh, end up where they were <laughs> you know no it was just it was just dreadful um in terms of the wit in, in terms of in terms of the sisters um you know you, you, like you said you, it's 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 your coming of what it's your coming out of water situation where they're coming from salem you know 12th century salem until 1993 so you like you said oh the the you know the vacuum cleaners and trying to you know move around and watching videotapes and getting confused that learning that you know halloween's 
Halloween's actually a thing that people celebrate. It's not something that's in, still scary, but now it's like a celebrated thing that people will dress up for and the whole weirdness, you know, the whole the gags and the jokes for 1993 it's just uh, uh yeah yeah it yeah it's it was it's not bearable it's it's not bearable I, all right let's yeah. just let's cut it here it's it's wrong what would you rate it out of 10 i uh, i'll 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 give it a 3 just simply cuz like a, Danny was such a cool character. Uh, you know, v Vanessa shows Allison was hot. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's 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 just very self level stuff. It was just, um, listen for those three women, uh, their careers were not ruined by this film. So, but uh, talk about the sequel. <laughs> Some of them so, saved their careers, believe it or not. So, I guess, yeah. uh, I am going to give it a generous, very generous, five out of ten. That's too generous. Like I said, I'm being, I'm being generous, uh, partially because I, I think it, it. I don't want to disrespect those who who like it so much. I, I recognize that it's become a cult thing. It, it's it, it's I I don't hate it. I don't enjoy it. I don't hate it. I've seen worse movies. So I'd, I'd just give it right middle of the pack. Uh, a, a, a generous five. Generous five. Generous five. Generous. And since we went there, we we should go on. And like I said, there's the uh, Hocus Pocus 2. That just came out to Disney Plus a few weeks ago. Which has a one hour and forty three minute runtime, is directed by Anne Fletcher of This Is Us, Love, Love Victor, and The Proposal, and other things. Uh, we so have Bette Miller, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Najami reprising their roles, but we do not have Max, Danny, and Allison Beck. In this case, we have Becca played by Whitney Peak, uh, Izzy by. Melissa Escobedo and Cassie by Lila Buckingham. Uh, oh, and also uh, Gilbert, who's Sam Richardson. Um, this one to me, I, I want to say this is the sequel we didn't know we needed. Really? Yes. Because I felt it was so much better put together than the first one. Interesting. Really? Uh, it, okay. Yeah. I'll let you go. I'll, I'll um, continue. I, I just felt there was a little more... A little more attention played. Like, we actually want to include a little more story to it instead of just, here's a situation, go. Like, we're going to put a little more backstory into it. We're going to put a little more... Uh, fill in some of the gaps that the first movie missed as far as who these three witches are and how they came to be and what their kind of their purpose is. Um, how did they end up with this book? How did they, you know, because before it said, oh, Satan gave it to them. They didn't see it. I'm like, okay. And, but no, it turns out, okay, it's a witch and you're carrying on and indoctrinating uh, these other ones and uh, how that all came to be. Uh, so you you got a little more actual story writing, um, you know, and there is an arc to it with a a ending that's a lot more satisfying than oh well here we go, uh, well we got ended somehow. Um, so I think you had a little more there with it. I'm not saying it's solid because there's star some stuff that's just like well wait a second how how, how did this all all fill out uh but they 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 did touch on uh filling in some areas where okay they mentioned oh the forest is where uh which is going to you know fill up on their power and get their powers and that line plays pays off with one of the characters um so 
Yeah, I, I think they're they're they paid a little more attention to doing this one. It is it's got a slightly longer runtime that may just be in credits, but it, it seems like it was it was put together better and they paid a little more attention to details and things had payoffs. Like Mary's having to use the the vacuum. Uh, you know the the little uh, iRobot uh, uh, smart vacuums. They paid that off instead of it just being a gag. There was actually a purpose to that. Yeah. Um. So it it kind of built and it actually I think helps the first movie. Well, it doesn't help the first movie, but it makes things have a little make a little more sense and it it kind of cleans up some of the mess of the first movie. Not fantastically, but uh, does make an attempt at it. And, and it, like I said, it stitches a few things together. Um, and I mean, it, the the actresses just kind of fell right back into their roles. Uh, the new characters I found a little more interesting than Max. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll bring up somebody else in a, in a moment. Uh, I do like the the Gilbert character and the again more purpose. There's like a purpose to this all happening. It 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 is there's a plan. There it just meaning that there's slightly more story. What is your take? Wow, my take in <laughs> terms of the film. Uh, yeah, I feel like it was the exact the exact same plot as the first one like okay literally recycled in certain areas i will give you credit though they did try to add a little bit more backstory between the witches and how they came to be they tried to create a nemesis and why why they were there which if if that were honestly the, the case i don't know why they didn't go after him in 1993 when the when when Tony Hale's character, who plays uh, Mayor Trasky, was like a little kid at that point, and that's so the enemy that you ruined your life, you would think you want to want to find that person that said ruined your life. So that well, that that, a that was weird. a good question, and he was that, the that guy that I, I wanted to bring up. That it's yeah. Tony Hale who yeah. you know is again his um, not too much on screen stuff. A lot of his voice acting though is incredible. Oh yeah, he's done a lot of yeah voice acting. And if anybody has remembered him from Arrested Development, he's he's a number one charm. That's that's where I've known Tony Hill from. But yeah, like over like yeah. So I mean, in ter- in terms of that, I guess I will agree. It's 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 a little better written, but not by much. I I think in terms of just the plot and everything, uh, Sam Richardson's character I think was just kind of shoved in. There was really no reason for his character other than to do things. And I get it to find Billy again, played by Doug Jones again. Though, but in terms of his character of just kind of finding things, like he wasn't super central in terms of having big moments. Well, he was the catalyst. That, you know getting stuff like that you know yeah but i feel like it was just one of those reasons we have to figure a way how to tie this back to 1993 again in some form or way and that was the way to do it because he was he was the catalyst um i even though it was a throwaway line i liked the the gag um of well they're not bad they were just misunderstood because that seems to be the direction everyone's going with and in the end, no, they are bad. It, it's no, nope, it's not that they're misunderstood. These are bad guys. They are the bad guys. Like even the Joker now, they're trying to. Well, he's not really that bad. He may be bad. He may be homicidal, but he's not. Th- he he has a heart. There's a reason for it. I just think in terms of like the plot line, it really like again him being that. Like I feel you you could have used the sisters to kind of figure out like. They could have figured something out. Like, he could have done something with just the three. Him just kind of being put in as that caliber. Like, he really wasn't... He, uh, like, again, I have nothing against Sam Richardson. I've seen him in other stuff, too, where he, he, he's fun. But in terms of this film, it was he was kind of just there, you know, honestly, to, oh, to do something. Like, honestly, I feel like you could, you could have done something a little bit more with Leela Bucket. Uh, Buckingham in some form because again she wasn't really in most of the movie until at least the third act 
and just to kind of whole play the whole sister the sisterhood bond thing like i thought that was going to be i thought they were going to play a little bit more onto that three which they kind of did um but maybe not to the bigger effect i thought they would maybe because of the disney budget this is a disney plus uh uh film but yeah, I just it literally is the same exact movie from beat to beat with maybe a little things here and there. Again, another fish out of water story again in repeat. They yeah. have, what's a Walmart? Oh my god, like what's a Walmart? Oh, we're gonna do the same, we're gonna do the same flying gag this time and instead uh Sarah Jessica Parker is on a uh, one of those um those sweeper wipers, you, you know, one of those. Who's on a swiffer? A swiffer, and and Mary is on a bunch of iRobot, one of those iRobot vacuums. You know, is it? And with the, it's the same number beat, uh, literally beat for beat, um, to the point where I'm happy this this was. Honestly, I'm not really happy this was a. I'm actually, gonna take that back. This really should have been a commercial for Walgreens. <laughs> well, part of it was. It really. If you have given me this as a as a commercial for Walgreens, like like a like a two minute commercial, if it was a Walgreens commercial, I would be like, oh, okay, great. That movie wasn't great, but you know, it's deserving of a commercial. I think that's totally not bad. But someone thought this would be really a movie because, like you said, it has a cult following to it, and uh, yeah, I'm. Again, like I said, there are it's a little bit better, but not by much, in in, in my honest opinion. So yeah, uh, I didn't say it was hugely better. I mean, the, well, the original give, one, you did give the original one a five, which I think you're being way too generous. Well, I, I said it was a generous five. <laughs> I did say it was a generous five. The original one had a budget of twenty eight million dollars estimated. Oh really? Wow. And I'm and I'm trying to figure out and I can't find it what the budget for this one is and then it's not released. Does I don't think Disney Plus gives out budgets. Uh sometimes they do. Yeah. But um but since it's all in house, they they can cover things up a little more. I mean, you would have to feel like it's a little bit more than what it is, maybe based on inflation and stuff like that, you know. Well, right, just I mean, because it's it's several they, years later. Yeah. So maybe they probably doubled doubled that. I I, I would one would have to think to be between at least like sixty or forty, and maybe at least double. It ain't yeah, I keep seeing everything for the original one. I'm trying to see. All, all I could say, it better not be. Well, I, I think we can comfortably say it's not over a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. No, no, no. So, uh, apparently, actually, it has the same uh, twenty-eight million dollar budget uh, as the original. Okay, that makes sense. And not a cent more. All nope. right, that's a very expensive Walmart, a Walgreens commercial. I'm sorry. Well, where do you think they got the 28 million from? Probably. Yeah, probably you're probably right. But yeah, yeah. I, I just, I, I, I've, I've never. Uh, I mean, it depends. Again, it's another, it's another fish out of water story again. And to kind of throw the same plot at people twice. It's just like, uh, whatever. It's not really that clever. It's 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 a it's a goofy again. At the end of the day, it's it's a goofy Halloween film that you can put in the background to maybe entertain your kids. Um, and yeah, that that that's pretty much it. I I really took away from this. Yeah, they they, they tried throwing a lot of the same gags in in a new. Form and fashion, and some yeah, were okay. Other ones still didn't hit. Um, if you, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I guess, paraphrase it. If you love the first one, you'll love the second one. I don't know why. I, I don't know. I, why. Hey, that, that's not for me to decide if someone loves a movie yeah. or not. It, every yes. movie out there is someone's favorite movie. 
You're absolutely correct. I did. There are stupid movies that I, that people don't understand why I love, and I, I love dearly. So you're absolutely right. But in terms for this film, I I just um I, I'll be nice. And if you're gonna do ratings, yes, I, I would I, I would I would I would slightly bump it up to a four. This would be a four film again to me. It felt like repurpose it purpose uh cat litter uh <laughs> film again but i yeah just thought the same exact plot over again not nothing really new was added other than special effects and, and um stuff. yeah I maybe mean, a little better story but not nothing a little better um i i going along the same lines as generous was the five was to the original, I'm going to generously give this one a six because, again, it is it is a s- semi step better. <laughs> it, it it is a step up. Uh, I'll give it that. It is a step up uh, as far as how things are panned out and done. Uh, but it is I. It doesn't do it for me. Neither of them really do it for me. Are these movies that I'm going to go back to? Probably not. My kids weren't even that interested in them. So it, it's... My one son watched the entire second one. Uh, the other one kind of gave up. And left. Actually, no. My daughter watched the entire second one. My boys, part way through, got up and left. The first one, they said, eh, it was all right. And, and that's coming from the target audience. Um... I didn't show them Werewolf by Night because it was something I wanted to make sure I watched first. May I show it to them? Maybe. Um, I think they would actually be a lot more interested in that one. Uh, and as we, we said, it is out of these three, our pick for your Halloween, you know, if you need, you want to get something into the, the Halloween spirit, uh, Werewolf by Night is the one to to watch out of these three that we're reviewing during our Halloween special. Uh, yeah, I, I think I, I would agree with you. Werewolf by again, to be fair, to even though I was not a big fan of the Hocus Pocus, both ones and two, again, totally different demographics in terms of Halloween True. and how to get into it. So. Uh, again, werewolf, you know, werewolf, it's a little bit more edgier, a little bit more adult, violent. This is just goofy. Uh, this is goofy, uh, fun with maybe some old gags, maybe some uh, adult innuendos throw, thrown in, and a constant pick on a kid's virginity. If you love the first one, that's totally great. Again, like you said, second two, they cut down a little bit more on that, a little bit aggressive on that. But other than that, it's it's a, it's all right. It's it's again, both films were not for me. Again, no. but you know, different folks with different strokes. I'm not here to knock on it. I just felt like these were just two corny films. One, and if you, yeah, yeah, go again, ahead. First one didn't ruin the careers of three women. The second one should have been a commercial. That's pretty much it. If you're looking for a corny lighthearted movie it, w- it would be those two if you're looking for something edgier go werewolf by night I agree. fair enough well thank you for uh, thank you for your takes on these it was a, a lot of research involved to bang out three movies in a few days Good to have you on, Isaac. Thank you very much for your your take on this, and uh, we'll be talking soon. Thanks, man. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Thank you again for listening, everyone. Thank you, Isaac, for joining us. What did you think? Join the conversation. Let us know what you thought of these three Halloween pictures now available on Disney+. Plus. Our main Facebook page is facebook.com slash WDMagicCast. On Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, we are at WDMagicCast. You could also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can catch the audio feed here of the show, plus 
some other stuff that will be coming out shortly. You can leave a voice message through the Anchor app and or Anchor.fm website, Be Heard Yourself, on the show. Or record a message electronically on your smartphone, tablet, computer, and email it to the show at email at WDMagicCast. Remember, 200th episode is just a couple of weeks away. Please be part of it. We'd love to have you on. Uh, send your messages to the email, email at WDMagicCast. You can also email us any questions or suggestions you may have to that address as well. Links to all these are in the show notes. I want to thank you for your time. I know how little time we all have. And the fact that you get to spend some of this, that we get to spend some of this together, truly means a lot to us. Uh, we really appreciate it. If we could just ask you, please spread the word. Share the link on social media. Go on to Apple Podcasts and Stitcher and leave us a review. We have all five-star reviews at the moment. Truly, we are blessed that this is the case. Keep them coming, though. We need more. The more that you put in there, the more that Apple and Switcher will promote our show for you. Doesn't that make it easy? You spend about two minutes, and they do the rest of the work. So go on there. Also, I mean, like, share it out on the social networks, too. Do, do both. Do both, please. Because the more people in this Disney family, the better. Won't believe in a big Disney family? So do I. Don't forget to subscribe to the show while you're at it. This way you always know when new episodes are posted. While you're at it, consider becoming a premium subscriber. Truly help the show out that way. And you can do this over at anchor.fm slash wdmagicast slash support. Or find us on our Patreon page. You can also check out some of the merchandise. You can get yourself some cool WD Magicast stuff um, in the shop. Links to all these are in the show notes. Because remember, this show is brought to you by listeners like you. Uh, let's go with it. Ancient Japanese proverb. In Japan, broken objects are often repaired with gold. These flaws are seen as a unique piece of the object's history, which is why it adds to its beauty. Consider this the next time you feel broken. Be your own hero. Never give up and never give in. I'd like to end this week's show with a quote from Walt Disney himself. We developed so many talents we, as we went along. That is why I lay awake figuring out how to use them. That's how we became so diverse. It was a natural branching out. And that's Walt Disney. Thank you again for listening, everyone. And I'll see you next time.